on this edition of Shelby This Week, our Shelby Township Police Chief was sworn into an organization and will serve a very important role. We'll tell you what this leadership position means to him. And six new police officers stood in front of their family and friends, taking an oath to serve our township. And our community rounded out the top five on this list, which will make you proud to call Shelby Township home. We have all this and much more headed your way on Shelby This Week. First, we're learning more about the 65-year-old Shelby Township woman who was found dead by police officers on the Macomb Orchard Trail. Police say the woman left her house sometime after 9 p.m. on Wednesday, January 3rd. Her husband reported her missing after he woke up the next morning. Assuming she had walked away from the house, police officers began to search the area. She was located on the trail later in the morning, unfortunately dead because of the extreme weather conditions. According to police, she suffered from mental illness and dementia. A similar case happened earlier last week in Roseville. A 96-year-old woman left her house in the early morning and was found dead on an elementary school playground. And while both of these deaths are extremely unfortunate, it's important that you're keeping an eye on your loved ones who may be suffering from dementia. We spoke to one local doctor on how you can look out for the signs of this disease and what you can do to make sure this doesn't happen to someone in your life. Numerous different signs occur. Not uh, every single person exhibits the same signs. That's the unique thing about dementia. Um, many have different common findings. Um, uh, and, and most commonly, the, the, the individual that's affected doesn't realize what's going on. And most of the signs and symptoms we get are actually from family members. A lot of them complain that the individual that's affected, um, you know, forgets things, uh, has a hard time with uh, what we call, um, you know, cognitive functions of managing their checkbook, um, you know, uh, remembering new items, new activities having a hard time with uh, repeating questions, repeating um, stories that they've told or asked earlier with the other family member. Um, so the key with, with, uh, with dementia is catching it relatively early. Um, it is something that affects quite a few people. A lot of people describe it as a normal aging uh, process, but in reality it's not. Um, it is something, however, that is predominant and very, um, very prevalent throughout age as we get older. As a caregiver, um, it's challenging, but you need to almost take a step back, almost like a parent would with an angry child. You have to um, take into account that you know that your, your loved one um, is having problems, and you have to, uh, to, to take that into account, whether it's counting to 10, or walking away from it, or diffusing a situation that is becoming uh, a little more aggressive, um, and then sitting down and calmly talking with them. Six police officers were sworn in to serve on the Shelby Township Police Force. I do solemnly swear. Ermir Vila, Stuart Martin, Mitchell Kula, Nicole Shinashtas, Ryan Nicely, and Michael Retzler were sworn into the department in front of their friends and family members. The Shelby Township Board of Trustees approved the hiring of the new officers at the December 5th Board of Trustees meeting. With the addition, the police department has a total of 71 serving on the force. The hiring of these officers brought the police department here in Shelby Township back to its staffing numbers prior to the recession. Police Chief Robert Schleid felt they were the perfect fit for Shelby Township. For whatever reason, these people just jumped out at me when I went to hire them. Their backgrounds, their, their, their personalities, their knowledge, their education level. Uh, I just saw a group of people that are extremely dedicated uh, members that want to be part of this family, that need a little bit of training. Now we have two certified officers that are going to fit right in immediately. Uh, Villa and Martin, they're going to hit the ground running, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, the, the rest of them are a little bit green. We'll take care of that. My motto is hire good people, we'll do the training. I don't need to hire good police officers, if that makes any sense. It just so happens the two police officers we hired are excellent people also. Our police chief, Robert Schleid, was given a special title last week as he was sworn in as president of an organization. Our Courtney Bennett has more. 
The Southeastern Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police sworn in their 2018 executive board. Our very own Shelby Township Police Chief Robert Shelide will serve the organization as president. The swearing-in ceremony was held right here in Shelby Township and it brought together officers from all over Michigan. Chief Shelide is proud to have earned this title. I started my 32nd year in law enforcement this month and uh, you know, I was started off as a Detroit street officer and a Detroit street cop for seven years, um, running around Detroit as a young guy, making a lot of arrests and everything. I loved police work always. I don't know if you heard my comments back there that we should all have pride in what we do and if we don't, it's time to hang it up. Well, I have much pride now than I did 31 years ago. Uh, I'm proud to serve our residents and our business owners and our community. In this leadership position, Chief hopes to get Shelby Township's name out there more, especially to communities who might not have heard of us before. A lot of people, when you say I'm here from Shelby Township, they don't even know where that is. And what I tell them, we're the 26th safest community in Michigan. Um, you know, we have 78,000 residents, so we're a very large community, growing obviously. We've had over $1 billion in construction on homes and businesses in the last three years. So this is an incredible community, and we keep the safety aspect uh, where it should be. And it's nice to be head of the organization uh, so I can throw you know, some love to Shelby Township out there. Throughout my career, I have had great people over me. Uh, watching out for me and everything and making sure that you know I'm doing the right thing at all times and we all need that if that makes any sense you know what I mean we all need someone to look over you right now my, my professional mentor is Gary Mary he's the chief of police in Troy and he's been mentoring me for the last three years uh, I owe the world to him Gary actually lives in the township so he's got a vested interest in my success and uh, just the different men that have helped me along the way to get to where I am that's what I'm most thankful for Chief Shelide is excited to start this new role within the organization, and we can't wait to see all the work he accomplishes. Reporting for Shelby This Week, I'm Courtney Bennett. From everyone here at Shelby TV, we would like to congratulate Chief Shelide on his leadership role within the Southeastern Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police. We've made it onto an important list once again. Shelby Township is officially considered a safe community. Safehome.org put together a list of safest cities in Michigan, and Shelby Township ranks number five. Coming in at number one is Rochester Hills, then West Bloomfield Township, followed by Farmington Hills, and then Royal Oak. The data to determine how safe the community is is collected by using the FBI's report on what types of crime happened and crime trends. Also included is law enforcement officer ratio, demographics, population, unemployment rate, income, and education. To find out more information about Shelby Township's score or to see what other Michigan communities made the list, you can visit safehome.org slash safestcities Winter can cause some outside dangers. We have tips to make sure you're having fun this winter, but also staying safe in the ice and snow. Enjoy a night out with friends and support a local organization. The annual Snowflake Social is upon us and we have all the details you need to know about. And families in Macomb County will benefit once again from the Shelby Township Giving Tree. The totals are in and all the items have been delivered to the Samaritan House. Macomb County, 27 cities, townships, and villages. From East Point to Memphis, Romeo to New Baltimore. 458 square miles of where you want to be. It's a place where your children can grow, and so can your business. Macomb County's tree-lined borders contain over 12,000 acres of parkland. Its outer edge, 31 miles of freshwater shoreline, both filled each year with countless concerts, festivals, and family reunions. It's the birthplace of advanced technologies that not only instruct future generations, but protect them. Hey, and those are just facts. You can get that from the internet or a book. No. To truly understand what Macomb County is all about, you need to experience it. You need to live here. You need to work here. When you do that, you'll know you're home.
Winter is here to stay, and while we experience some of the coldest days of the year, it's important to remember cold weather brings along dangerous conditions. Our Robert Gambrell has more on how you can keep your family safe during this time. Ice fishing and ice skating are the few things that we all love to do during the winter season. But firefighter Jeremy Verbeck would like to give you a few safety tips before going out onto the ice. No ice is safe ice. Uh, just because it's 15 inches thick in one spot doesn't mean that it, there's not a bubbler or spring underneath that's keeping it thin at another spot. Firefighter paramedic Jeremy Verbeck has been the Swiftwater diving team leader for 15 years and knows quite a bit about ice. So clear ice is the safest ice. Minimum standards is anything around four inches is safe for humans to walk on. The thicker it is, then you can have heavier weights that, that the ice can hold. Just because you think that the ice is okay to walk on, there is still a possibility that you might fall through. If you go on the ice, expect to fall in the water and be prepared for it. The fire department have had several incidents when it comes to citizens falling through the ice. Here are some tips if you are in this situation. Dress appropriately, make sure you have flotation. That's spikes on your shoes or what they call ice awls that, that you have for your hands. In case you were to fall through, you could use those to get out because once the water touches the ice, it becomes very slick and you have no traction. If you live by a pond and love ice skating, just remember to test the ice. We have over 100 residential ponds in the township, so every backyard seems to have access to, uh, to a body of water where they could you know, use, uh, use it for winter recreation. Uh, you just need to make sure that the ice is safe. You can still enjoy these fun winter activities with your friends and family, but just think twice before hitting the ice. I'm Robert Gambrell, Shelby This Week. And while we're on the topic of cold weather, among human beings vulnerable to extreme weather conditions, we have to think about our animals as well. Our Stacy Sansaterra has information on how you can assure your animals are kept safe and warm during the winter. When temperatures drop and the weather becomes nothing short of unbearable, it is our responsibility to make sure that our pets are protected. Unfortunately, with the recent winter blast, there are still pet owners out there that simply don't get it. I think it's unacceptable. I think if you have your dog outside, if it's just going to the bathroom, coming back in, or you're watching it for a second, it's running around, having a good time for a minute, great. But then you need to bring them in. And because not all pet owners take this common sense approach to the extreme temperatures, it's a very busy time for animal control. It's extremely challenging. I would say 98% of all the calls today have been animal welfare checks on domestic and wildlife and livestock. And the Macomb County Animal Control has a zero tolerance policy when it comes to animal welfare. You know, we're not going to tolerate animals being left outside. And I could tell you most of the police departments that we work with, they're amazing as well. And they're, you know, very strong animal advocates and they're not going to as well. And this kind of community support is a tremendous asset as you never know what the next call will bring. You know, range from anything from domestic animals being in jeopardy and welfare checks to wildlife. You know, so just, you know, last week we were out on Lake St. Clair. There was a canvasback male duck that was stuck in fishing lines. He was just uh, snagger on his foot. He might be able to fly away. So thank God for the Harrison Township Fire Department that went out there and rescued him. Um, so, you know, the residents are calling about, you know, a lot of animals. And residents calling, seeking help for the voiceless, is so important. You know, it wouldn't take long for an animal to die out there, you know, and so we, we have to take it seriously, and every case is investigated. So the bottom line, don't hesitate to make a call. This simple act could indeed save a life. You know, don't think you're going to trek on it in the morning because you see a dog sitting there outside shivering. Make sure you call because if you don't, things could be a whole new story when the sun comes up, right? For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansaterra. The cold may have you down, but there is a chance for you to get warm inside. The Township Senior Center wants everyone to know there is plenty of activities to get involved with and stay out of the cold weather. Here at the Senior Center, we're, we're open every day. We're glad to have anybody come in that may need a place to stay or some shelter away from the cold. We have, I know the libraries had some events as well that they're open during the day and up until 8 o'clock most days. If someone wanted to come in to the Warming Center, we do have meals here on a limited basis that they could participate in. Um, some of our activities for seniors that we do on a daily basis. And there is, you know, comfortable chairs to sit in if you just wanted to sit and relax and be in from the cold. And speaking of the library, there are some events coming up in January which welcome everyone of all ages. Get out your calendars. On January 11th and 25th, 
families and jammies will be held starting at 6.30 p.m. You can enjoy stories, songs, and a variety of activities. The whole family is invited to this event. January 13th, the library will host Sensory Story Play. Children ages 3 to 12, along with a caregiver, will enjoy story time to engage all senses using rhythm, movement, and play at sensory stations. Then, on Saturday, January 20th, there will be a Pokemon Hangout. Participation of all ages is encouraged for this event. The fun starts at 2 p.m. in the Community Center Craft Room. If you're interested in finding out more information, you can visit the library online at shelbytwplib.org or visit them on Facebook by searching Shelby Township Library. Enjoy a night out with the Shelby Community Foundation for their annual Snowflake Social. The organization will host the event on January 19th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. at the Palazzo Grande. In its 11th year, the social invites attendees to enjoy a strolling dinner and sample both red and white wine. All the proceeds go towards the Community Foundation Scholarship Program. You give where you live. Uh, the Shelby Community Foundation uh, gives to the current, uh, you know, to grant programs and scholarships and needs in the community at the present time. And we are o the only organization that holds endowment funds for the future also. So uh, we have a good amount of money in our end uh, endowment fund and we hope that will go on forever and ever. To purchase tickets for the event, visit shelbycommunityfoundation.org or you can call 586-909-5305. Through the generosity of Shelby Township residents as well as Township employees, this year's Giving Tree was a success. Throughout the month of December, people donated items to be given to families in need from Macomb County. We were able to collect over 1,200 items, um, ranging from pantry items to personal hygiene. Um, we've got toys for kids. We even had a resident donate a Christmas tree. It's just a really great turnout for us this year. This is the third year Shelby Township has sponsored this event for Samaritan House, which is a local nonprofit organization in Macomb County. We service low-income families, seniors in this area, and trying to get the perishables, you know, non-perishables, especially like deodorant, shampoo, socks. I see all kinds of stuff in there. It means so much to them. You and I take for granted that we have socks and gloves and toothpaste and toothbrushes, but to some of our clients, this is a, this is a big deal. They can't buy this kind of stuff with food stamps, and so it is just such a huge blessing every year when Shelby Township puts this together for us and comes in and every year we just are amazed by the, just the effort that's put into it. We know it takes a lot of time to do this and we just appreciate it a lot and we know that our clients appreciate it. And while the holiday season is over, Samaritan House continues to take donations all throughout the year. They also are always looking for volunteers. To find out more information, you can visit them online at SamaritanHouseMichigan.org. Coming up next, hourly pay rate has increased in the state of Michigan. Learn if you will benefit from this increase. And the Shelby Township Clerk's Office is holding a job fair. If you're looking to make a little bit of extra money, this might be the perfect opportunity for you. We'll tell you when the fair is and how you can land one of these positions. Hey, I'm Tyler Perry. Do you know what hunger in America looks like? Well, it has many faces, and 16 million of those belong to children. Yet billions of pounds of food go to waste each year, and this is unacceptable. You can be a part of the solution. Join us in supporting the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks, which rescues our surplus foods and provides meals to many families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org today. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. In this new year, minimum wage has gone up. As of January 1st, Michigan's minimum hourly wage increased by 35 cents, bringing the total amount to $9.25. 
Now this is the final increase for the pay rate, which falls under the Workforce Opportunity Wage Act. Back in 2014, the minimum wage rate was $8.15. Then, on January 1st of 2016, it increased to $8.50. And last year, on January 1st, it went to $8.90. While the wage has increased, training wage for employees still remains the same. And employees who receive tips may be paid 38% of Michigan's minimum wage. Michigan is not the only state to increase minimum wage this year. 18 other states also have a higher rate of pay. According to the Economic Policy Institute, these increases across the U.S. directly affect 4.5 million workers. And if you're looking for a way to make a little bit of extra money, the Shelby Township's clerk's office might have the perfect opportunity for you. On January 17th, the election worker job fair will be held at the Shelby Township Municipal Building. Anyone who is interested in serving as an election worker must be a United States citizen and registered to vote. The fair starts at 6 p.m. And senior citizens, high school, and college students are highly encouraged to apply. Election workers will be compensated for their time working on Election Day. If you would like to find out more information, you can visit ShelbyTWP.org or call the clerk's office directly at 586-731-5102. And that's all for this edition of Shelby This Week. Remember, you can catch us all the time online and on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. We'll leave you now with more scenes from the police officers swearing in ceremony. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.